Prime Minister Perry Christie presents a budget featuring fiscal discipline, debt reduction and an action plan addressing the needs of hurting Bahamians. Good evening everyone, I'm Keishla Adderley. And good evening, I'm Charisma Robinson. The country's financial roadmap was laid out in Parliament today and it shows that government is on track to reduce deficit by a further $100 million by the end of the year. Now, in his agenda for a modern Bahamas, the Prime Minister said the 2016-2017 budget includes additional cost-cutting measures, which will bring more relief to Bahamians. During the communication, the Prime Minister also announced a significant breakthrough in the stalled BAMAR talks. Tonight, we have team coverage of the budget communication in the House of Assembly, and our Clint Watson leads us off tonight with that much-anticipated announcement. government to the much-anticipated and long-awaited news on Bahamar. A joint statement from China XM Bank, China State Construction Engineering Company, who by the way is still on the contract to finish construction of Bahamar, and the government confirms that after two days of negotiations, all parties have agreed to complete the construction of Bahamar. The arrangement provides for a framework for putting in place the financing required for completion of the project and for CSEC's indirect subsidiary CCA Bahamas to remobilize and restart construction to finish the project as expeditiously as possible. It is expected that many contractors who have participated in the construction of the project will be re-engaged in this process. Mr. Speaker, I am satisfied based on the statement and the assurances given in Beijing that every effort is being made to enable an earliest possible remobilization and that adequate funding is in place to provide for the completion of the project and the satisfaction of the legitimate claims of Bahamian contractors yes. and suppliers. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie also revealing that the first round of bids has closed and a number of reputable investors have shown interest. These investors will be evaluated. The Prime Minister's budget communication went into great detail outlining projects, investments and job opportunities on tap for the country. Projects that will generate 8,000 construction jobs and 5,000 permanent ones, not including Bahamar. In fact, he says he's willing to support all those workers from Bahamar who are willing to go back to work. As to criticisms that some secret deal was negotiated. The governments of the Bahamas, both FNM and PLP, committed themselves to a favored nation status to Atlantis. Any advantage given to any development in the Bahamas must be given to Atlantis. So therefore, therefore, credit this government with sense that this government will not unilaterally negotiate anything without taking into consideration what has to happen for Atlantis. It does not arise. And this government will not sell citizenship. I want a number of new fees and taxes will also be implemented to enhance revenue. There are also a number of fiscal measures designed to bring relief. These include extensions of certain acts and the reduction of elimination of a long list of taxes. To allow for the waiver of real property tax arrears for owner-occupied properties which values with values less than $250,000, which Mr. Speaker could potentially benefit over 41,000 homeowners. Wow. But the good news didn't stop there. The government also announcing through the first reading of a bill the move to borrow significantly less than previous years and even previous administrations. And I just happened upon the borrowing resolution from 2012 when we first came to office. It was a borrowing resolution in the sum of $500, $512 million. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House authorizes the Minister of Finance to raise by way of loan or loans the sum of $99,504,720 in such currency as the Minister may determine. That is the amount of money we need to borrow this year, Mr. Speaker. Prime Minister Christie says his administration is concerned about ensuring they're able to remove the pain and suffering from Bahamians, particularly young people. As a matter of fact, that sector comes at an unemployment rate of 35 percent. 
Prime Minister Chrissy also talked about relief for that sector, and that is by establishing an entrepreneurship program. Janina Wall Ferguson has an angle. Thanks so much, Clint. Well, the government plans to launch an aggressive apprenticeship program that he says will arrest youth unemployment in the country. He reveals so much during his budget presentation on Wednesday and says the program will ensure that young people are trained and employable for the long term. Under this new program, for which we have in, in this budget allocated $22 million, Mr. Speaker, Persons will be paid to work and train in a very formal manner with certification on completion, certification on completion of the premise. Mr. Christie stressed that it will be quite different from the former administration's program where young people were simply placed on jobs. Christie explained that they will be certified. He also noted that the Grand Bahama Shipyard will play a major role in this new program. In that it is not strictly about job placement for the unemployed, but rather training to ensure that persons are able to attract and retain long-term employment. I thank the Minister for Grand Bahama and the Minister uh, responsible for immigration for being able to work with the shipyard and being able to, in a short period of time relatively, replace 600 foreign work permit holders with 600 behaviors. The Prime Minister added that many participants of the program will be hired immediately to work on major projects in the capital, and most importantly, he said, government plans to reduce temporary and contracted workers. Many of these workers, Mr. Speaker, joined the public service without the requisite qualifications. And through their own hard work and commitment, they're making a valuable contribution to the public service yes. and to our country. Yes. They are deserving. Yes. They are deserving of being integrated into the public service. Yes. Yes. And there's more relief for Bahamians on the way. The Prime Minister unveiled a revamped mortgage relief program. The program will provide financial incentives that will allow banks to offer borrowers who have some ability to pay but have fallen behind the chance to get back on track. Yes, Subject to program eligibility, subject to program eligibility criteria, banks will offer qualifying borrowers a minimum of 20 to 25 percent reduction in monthly payments. For their part, borrowers will be required to attend a financial counseling program that will be established and run by the government, according to initial estimates upwards of 1,000 delinquent borrowers, which are persons who are 90 days or more in arrears as of May 1st, 2016, are anticipated to qualify initially for the mortgage relief program. That number could, of course, go much higher. The program has been designed to make it as attractive as possible for eligible borrowers to agree to, partici to, to, agree to participate. Now, following Wednesday's budget communication by Prime Minister Perry Christie, the official opposition, the Free National Movement held a press conference afterward to state their views on the projected future for the country. Our Altavis Munnings picks up the story from here. Thanks, Jenea. Not enthused, not surprised. That's how the opposition Free National Movement feels about the 2016-2017 budget communication delivered in the House of Assembly this morning by the Minister of Finance, Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie. Moments after that communication, the opposition held a press conference right here in the House of Assembly's minority room. It was led by its Shadow Minister of Finance, the Member of Parliament for East Grand Bahama, and FNM Deputy Leader, Peter Turnquest. The Prime Minister indicated today that the economy of the Bahamas has in fact decreased, shrunk over the last two years going into three years. That is an incredible statement which they seem to want to have glossed over. But it represents the, not only the depth of the problems in our economy, but it represents real suffering by real Bahamian people.
the suggestion that they will put $2 million into a fund over 40 years or 20, 20 years to assist uh, people in staying in their homes is pure fantasy and fiction and does not fix the underlying problem with respect to mortgage uh, arrears. That is a much more complicated issue that requires a much more thought out and thoughtful uh, response. The FNM's Shadow Minister of Finance also believes that the government's announcement about the Bahamar Resort in Western Providence won't bring any relief to the economy. What was presented today was nothing more than a letter from the Chinese partners saying that they are willing to sit down and to discuss a solution. Nothing in the letter that was read suggests that there is a commitment to finance and a commitment to a specific timetable for this project to be restarted. Bahama has a significant impact on our credit rating and, despite what he says, on investor confidence in the country. Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis also weighing in on this morning's budget communication, noting that he was disappointed about some of the announcements made. I was disappointed that the Prime Minister had not given a tax holiday for those areas, especially knowing that regardless are coming up and it's very important for them to get their lives back together. The Free National Movement's parliamentary team plans to have more to say on the 2016-2017 budget. Reporting from the House of Assembly, I'm Altavis Money, ZNS Network News.